Hey everyone, it is great to begin the week with you this Monday morning. Um, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 9, continuing in our study, beginning in verse 14 today. Then John's disciples came and asked him, How is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, How can the guest of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Now, there's two points we have to look at here, really, in this question that Jesus answered. First is the question of fasting. The assumption of Jesus is that there is a time for fasting. He doesn't criticize uh, the Pharisees or, or J John's disciples for fasting, but it's their misunderstanding that uh, he addresses. He says, when the bridegroom is there, the guests don't fast. So the point is, the disciples are not to fast right now, fast to seek God's will to seek communion with Jesus because they are with Jesus physically in person. So the implication is that when Jesus is gone, fasting becomes a normal practice of the Christian life. And for us, for you and for me, this is something that should be a part of our Christian walk and our Christian life. Fasting, the, the, the abstaining from food for a period of time to seek communion and fellowship with the Lord. Now, the examples that Jesus uses about sewing a patch on a garment, an, 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 an unshrunk cloth, or putting new wine into old wineskins, and so on and so on, the point Jesus is making is that he did not come to uh, mend Judaism. He did not come to simply patch the problems of the Jewish faith. He did not simply come to uh, invigorate and give new life into what men had had disrupted in the Jewish faith of the first century. What he's saying is, I am here bringing you the proper way, the new life that's found in me, the way that God intended you to worship from the beginning. The point is that Jesus is not just taking Jewish practices, or we could even look at other religions, not just religious practices of the world, but he's bringing the proper way, the new way of life. For us to follow. And the implication is that fasting is a part of that new way of life, but not in the same sense, not for outward righteousness, not so that men and women can see you, but so that we can have communion with the Lord, seek direction from the Lord, give sacrificially for a time of fellowship. Father, we thank you. My prayer today is twofold. One, I pray that we would fast, that we would seek after you in this, this spiritual practice, that you would give us uh, the wisdom, the courage, the discernment to be able to be obedient in this way. But Lord, I also pray that you would help us to find your path and, and not simply try and incorporate old religious practices or man-made ideas, but that we would worship you in spirit and in truth, worship you as you desire to be worshipped and you created us to worship. Help us not to try and simply correct man-made religion, but to worship in a way that's pleasing and honoring to you. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.